The Police, Stuart Copeland, Roxanne. Let's do this. Stuart Copeland is a fantastic drummer and his playing with the police has influenced a lot of different drummers. His playing is creative, it has lots of dynamics and it's also just very powerful to listen to. His playing the song Roxanne, just like many other police songs, is very creative and matches the song fantastic. So it's a very cool song to actually dive into for the drums because you can really relate to what he's doing and what the other parts, the bass and the guitar are doing. Before we start diving into this song, I want to tell you that the way I normally teach songs and also that's something that I would recommend you doing is not think about a complete part that you have to learn with every detail. We're gonna have a look at the most important parts of this song. If we look at it specifically, there are three different rhythms that he's playing. So before we dive into the song, I wanna tell you that it really helps if we don't worry about all the details of the song. Therefore, I recommend that we look at the most important elements of the song, and then later on we see how we can fit them in the song. Also, I will always look at different options. So I will not always look at what he's exactly playing, but what might be working for you if you're not ready to play exactly these elements. So think about the things that you can leave out. So let's start with the groove he's playing in the verses. I will first just play it for you. Not yet with open hi-hats, just kick drum, snare drum, and a hi-hat. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So what you might have noticed is that I'm not playing a bass drum on the one. That makes the rhythm really interesting, but it's also tricky because in most situations we're used as a drummer to play a bass drum on the one when we start our rhythm. And this is not the case. So if we leave out the bass drum, and this is actually interesting to do, Stuart Copeland basically plays eighth notes in the hi-hat, one and two and three and four and, and a snare drum on two and four, just like a normal basic rhythm. So you get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So if we then look at the bass drum, he's playing a bass drum on the end of one and on the two. If I play that really slowly, you get this one and two and three and four and. So let that sink in, a bass drum on the end of one and a bass drum on the two. Now playing the bass drum on the two means you play it together with the snare drum. That happens in disco, but it doesn't happen a lot in straightforward pop rhythms or rock rhythms. You either play a lot of different variations with the bass drum. In this case, he plays that bass drum on end of one and two because it locks together with the bass guitar. If you listen to this example, you will hear that. So that's the main rhythm for the intro and the first verse and also the second verse. So we already covered a big part of the song when you're able to play this rhythm. Now the challenge of a lot of songs lies always in making sure you can play it faster because the original tempo is around 132 bpm and now i was playing it maybe around 50 bpm so that means at least doubling it in tempo so there lies a challenge because it needs to be close to this tempo One, two,
That's the challenge of this song. Being able to play it faster. When the song starts, he only starts with playing his hi-hat. You just get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So you might notice that I'm not playing a straight downstroke all the time on my hi-hat. I'm playing a slightly what we call the Muller technique. is a downstroke upstroke to get this flow in the hi-hat. If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. This is a detail. Of course it's an interesting sound, but it should not prevent you to play the song. So if you just want to play only downstrokes, that's all good. So in the beginning, he plays only the hi-hat and he has an upbeat opening it. So you get one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one and he plays that a lot of times not always but a lot of times so you can just practice in the beginning by always playing an open hi-hat on the end of four so one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four now after two bars of only hi-hat he comes in with the rhythm, but watch out, he's not playing the snare drum on the four, the first round of chords. No snare drum on the fourth count. So you get this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and nothing. One and two and three and no snare. One and two and three and no snare. You still get the open hi-hat by the way, so you still get one and two and three and four. 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 One. That's the beginning of this song. First two bars only hi-hat with an upbeat opening it. One, two, three, four, and one. Two bars of only hi-hat, then the bass drum comes in, end of one, end on two, and the snare drum on two. And you play a whole round of chords, and this is interesting about this song, because the chords develop in such a way that at one point you want to close it again. By playing a crash cymbal on the end of four, that's what we call anticipating. You're anticipating actually on the one. So the last bar of that chord sequence, you're playing this. One and two and three and four. Let me play that again. One and two and three and four. Now in the original recording, Stuart Copeland plays a flam on the fourth count to crash on the end of four. You can also just play a normal snare drum if you don't want to worry about playing a flam. Again, keep in mind, it's not about all the details. You want to play the song, not like play all the little details. Because you're going to start worrying about those details. And you're not making music in the end. So, he's playing a flam, you can also just play the snare. Now in the music, a whole chord sequence sounds like this. Then after that first sequence, the vocals come in and we're at the first verse. And then you start adding the snare drum on the fourth count and you get the rhythm that we actually had in the beginning. That's the first rhythm, when the vocals start. The reason that he starts playing that snare drum on the four is a musical reason. So you get a sense of speed, things are moving, there is development going on. So, snare drum also on four when the vocals start. And the first, first verse is two sequences of chords. So again, at the end of a couple of bars, and I'm not gonna mention the amount of bars because I don't want you to make math out of this. It's not math. You wanna listen to the music and wanna follow the sequence of chords and you will always know at one point where to finally play the four. It can be still a flam. Stuart Copeland's doing other stuff, but you can still play a flam and crash anticipating on the end of four. So again, when the vocals start,
you have in that bar, the last bar that I was playing, again, that anticipated crash. That's also a unique part of this song. Every time the ending, that special sequence of chords with that specific ending. The verse is twice that chord sequence. Now let me show you the last bar of the first part of the verse where he does something else than the flam. Again, don't worry, if you don't want to add that yet, you can still play the song. But if, you, if you're going for a challenge and you want to look at the little details he's doing, the first time he's doing this. One and two and three and four and one. So he's playing a snare drum on the end of three, a high tom with the right hand on the four. And then you can play the crash also on the end of four with your right hand. So you get again, one and two and three and four and one and three. The vocals have a pickup. We go to the second part of the verse. Again, same rhythm. Don't forget, uh, if you want, you can add the open hi-hats, of course. And then you, he ends towards the pre-chorus in a different way. He's doing this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Now he's also playing on end of three and four, but he's now doing a high tom and a low tom. One more time. One and two and three and four. You can play along with these options. It's fun. You can still also play the flam. You can also do something yourself. You can do a flam or you, yeah, you can do a flam with a floor tom. You can do a combined hit, not flaming, but really at the same time. So floor tom, snare drum at the same time. On the four, it's all good. Um, after the verse, we go to the pre-chorus. And it's not a lot different than the verse. But in such a way, it's different that it's really supporting the song. And it's fun to play. You go instead of the hi-hat to the right symbol. Stuart Copeland, and that's the fantastic element of his playing, is playing around with the bell and with the right symbol in a way. Let's not worry about that in the beginning. Again, as I said before, you want to play the song. You don't want to worry about all the small details when you're learning this song. At one point, when you feel comfortable playing all these different elements, then you might go for the next step and start digging into the details. But first, let's start with building the construction or the foundation of the house. Let's not put in the doors right away. All right. It's actually a good thing. Maybe you should do a door song next time. Anyway, let's continue by playing the pre-chorus. It's almost the same as the verse, but then, as I said, you play on the right symbol. So let's do that. One and two and three and four and one. Now you might think, hey, He's not playing a snare drum on the four, and you're right, he's not. But this is the beginning, and again, if you want to do that, and if you feel comfortable, you're still playing the music. But what he's doing, he's playing two toms on four and end of four. And he's alternating between two toms. Now, I only have a high tom here and a floor tom, or a low tom. So I'm, I'm going to alternate between a high tom and a floor tom. First, I play the two strokes on four and end of four on the high tom. And then I'm gonna play two strokes on four and end of four on the floor tom. It's gonna sound like this. Now, again, this works. Work on your stamina, work on your speed, and then you can always dive into what I'm about to say now. And that's a little bit of detail because he plays very dynamically on the toms. The first tom is a little bit softer than the second tom. So you get one.
You can go for that. Sometimes he's also not playing both toms and I only hear him playing a tom on only the end of four. Again, details. Fun to look into when you're ready for it. If you just want to play the song, don't worry too much about it. Now the chord sequence of the pre-chorus also wants you to end with that crash on the end of four, the anticipation of that, of the one. So you're playing a couple of bars. Again, I'm not thinking about amount of bars. A lot of people will start thinking in which bar am I or how many bars did I just play? You don't want to worry about that. You want to follow the music. You want to follow the chord sequence. So you're playing one. can do the same thing again play either a snare Stuart Copeland is playing other stuff of course he's a fantastic drummer very creative but if you want to stick to one plan and just play the flam on four it's good but you want to play that crash on the end of four because the music asks for it the guitar is playing there the bass is playing there and it, the music needs it so that's actually a key element anticipating the crash on the end of four and then there comes a tricky part, and I don't want to dive into changing from the pre-chorus to the chorus yet. I first want to just look at what you can play in the chorus. Then you have your three different building blocks, building stones that work with this song. So, what he plays in the chorus is he's going straight for a normal rhythm. And what I mean with a normal rhythm is kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, straight ahead. It's kind of like punky, rockish. So, what he's playing there is this, one and two and three and four and... So he's actually playing all the bass drums on all the eighth notes except for two and four where the snare drum is played. So you fill up all your hi-hats with bass drums, one and not two, end of two, three, three and not four, end of four. So you get a very pushy and punky rhythm. All right, so that's the rhythm. He plays it a bit more aggressive, of course. That fits the music very well. And you wanna maybe slightly open your hi-hat. If that's possible, if you feel comfortable with that, don't do it if you're not feeling comfortable. So you open up your hi-hat a bit and you get and I'm gonna play it a bit faster. You're gonna get one and two and three and four and. Practice that first, get comfortable with that rhythm. Now, there are accents in the guitar and in the bass that you also wanna play. But if you're not ready for it, don't do it. If you want to do it, then I, I advise you that at the end of, or actually at the change of every chord, you hear the guitar play accents on end of three and end of four. Now normally a lot of drummers want to anticipate the crash or something on the end of four, but Stuart Copeland is not doing that. And that's an interesting part of his playing the chorus. You want to play the crash on the one every time when he shifts, when the guitar shifts to a different chord. So you get one, two, three, four. So you play the crash on the one. You're not going together with the guitar and with the bass anticipating on the end of four. It's an interesting choice and I like it. It works really well in the music, but it's very much a contrast to what you would like to do because we, as the drums, we want to join them in anticipating on the end of four, but he's not doing that. So it sounds like this with the music. Alright, so we talked about three different elements of this song. We talked about the verse rhythm, we talked about the pre-chorus rhythm, and we talked about the chorus rhythm. Now there's one little challenge if you want to change from pre-chorus to chorus. Because when he anticipates the crash on four, afterwards he does a build-up 
on the toms. You can also join in with your bass drum and build it up in eighth notes. It sounds like that. That's the challenging part. For now, I would advise you to try to do it by ear. He's playing the build up on the toms. You can again join with your bass drum to put in extra power. If you don't feel like doing that, only the toms is also good enough. But if you have the last rhythm of the pre chorus on your cymbal, he starts building on the end of one of the new bar. So you get one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's the tricky part. So you start up building on the end of one. Flam or a single hit is also good, but a flam sounds nice on the three, and then you hear the guitar and the bass play accents that you also want to support. And he does that with first the open hi hat, and then the second time a crash on the end of four. If I play that last bar, it's one and two and three and four. Let me do that again. Three and four and One more time. One and two and three and four. And then you have to start picking up your chorus rhythm. So it's not a perfect transition that goes like. No, there's a build up going on in the middle. So. That's, that build up is obviously not like a, it's a part of the song obviously, but it's not a, I would not see that as one of the three main building blocks. All right, I hope you can work with this. In the description below, you will find transcriptions of the different rhythms. I do not really advise people to play complete scores because your face is gonna be constantly looking at a part. And you want to make music, you want to use your ears, and you don't want to use your eyes. Of course, reading rhythms is a great way to learn new stuff, but this is not about sight reading. This is about making music. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and stay tuned for the next. <laughs>